Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and this is, this guy is Ian Rogers, Ledger uh, Chief Experience Officer, and he came on to Bloomberg because he's talking about the stacks. Now, I don't remember if you remember the stacks, but a lot of people pre-ordered the stacks, including myself, and then they had a problem with their the creation of their screens or something, and that delayed it for like a year. Then, somewhere along the way, there was some it seems like somebody that worked at ledger had made some comment that they had a back doorway to get into those things or something and everybody kind of abandoned them i'm i have been abandoned them for a while I've, I've got a little bit not not anything major on a ledger but here he is talk and i'm not saying that that back door thing is true or not true i'm just saying that's kind of the way i remember the story I gotta tell you, just talking about this product in the newsroom, I still think there's this gap in understanding about why someone would need self-custody of their crypto, especially if they're buying crypto as an investment rather than using it to buy and sell things. So what's the use case here for, for those people? Well, I think you know the, the question I always ask is, if not self-custody, why crypto? You know, what really is the innovation? Um, I well, see, there I disagree because the why crypto a lot of people invest in Bitcoin, no matter, and they custody it, self custody, or they might have it in in uh, institutional custody, but they're in it because of the limited amount, the 21 million Bitcoin. A lot of people could be in XRP for the same reason, limited to 100 million. The idea being that if utility comes through XRP a lot over time, price increases and there's a limited amount. Doesn't really have anything to do with the custody of it the very base level, if you think about the revolution of the internet, that was this, this revolution where information became uh, you know, free. It moved around more freely. So what's the revolution of blockchains? The revolution really is digital ownership. Um, you know, so security and custody is important. Wherever you have your digital value, you know, you want to know that it is that is safe and it's available to you uh, when you want it. And having self custody or you know ownership, you know self ownership, is is not only you know an option, but in many ways it's a right. And it's a right, you know, not only to own your own value, the way that you can take your own possessions and, and put them in your in your personal safe, um, but also to be able to use them. Right? You have possession of your passport and your driver's license, and that allows you to use. I do love the ledgers. I love their how you can trade inside of it and swap and all that. I really like their product. And it never did sit well with me when that back door stuff came out, though I didn't like that a bit. Check this out. This is um, the BRICS news. Russia says, unlike the West, the goal of the BRICS is to unite countries and create fair opportunities for every state. The West is the one who tries to divide the world into various blocks. You can recall that lately, although we haven't seen it uh, quite recently, the U.S. Have, has convened various summits for democracy. Uh, they unilaterally invited participants. As for the criteria for the invitation, there was only one criteria, their loyalty to the U.S and primarily their loyalty to the Joe Biden's Democratic administration. As for the rest, they were described as autocracies. By the same token, our blog division, there is the notorious statement of EU chief diplomat, Joseph Borrell, that Europe is a blossoming garden surrounded by jungles. Let us not forget about the statement of US State Secretary, Blinken, he stated that those who do not wish to be at the negotiating table, democratic table, does not opt for democratic values, risks uh, ending up in the menu that will be presented at this democratic table. I haven't heard um, 
and more racist and neo-colonial statements, it's hard for me to imagine something of this sort. That, were, that is why it's not BRICS who is uh, um, isolating itself from the rest of the world. On the contrary, BRICS is a group of countries who are interested in the justice in the international arena. Uh, BRICS does not claim to have a, to be a pool. Uh, there would be uh, many polls in the multiple world order today. We were talking about various processes unfolding in Eurasia as the fastest growing continent, namely the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, the Eurasian Economic Union, ASEAN, the Gulf Cooperation Council, and naturally the Commonwealth of Independent States as well as a host of other integration groups that establish relations between each other. They start to harmonize their actions on the similar agenda. All right. And then um, I went back and I found uh, this is a video of Jim Rickards back in 2014. And he was early. And he's right. Probably have to go back to a gold standard because that's the one thing people do understand. It's the one thing they do trust. So there's not a central bank in the world that wants a gold standard, but they may have to go to a gold standard to restore confidence. So let's wait and see on that. It's ultimately a game of confidence. Once the consumers lose confidence, once the countries, banks lose confidence in the dollars, so that, that's ultimately the tipping point, right? Correct. If I had to pick one word, one word to describe risk in capital markets, I would say confidence. You know, people like to talk about Bitcoin, you know, is Bitcoin money? Well, it's a kind of money. I, I wouldn't argue with that. But at various times in history, feathers have been money, clamshells have been money, uh, silver, gold, paper, Bitcoin. Now, you remember what he's saying, folks. He's from a three-letter agency or was with one. Remember what he's saying because I'm going to bring up something about Bitcoin and Tether at the end of this video, and you're going to want to remember what he said. Digital, crypto, they can be money if people have confidence. But the minute confidence is lost, they're not money anymore, and whatever you had in that is wiped out. So then the question is, well, why should I have confidence? That's a matter of trust. Do I trust the policymakers? Are they helping the economy, or are they trying to rip me off with inflation? Are they lying to me? Well, just look at any opinion poll. People don't have much trust in policymakers these days. So I would say that confidence is close to a tipping point. One of my concerns about policymakers, the Treasury, the Federal Reserve, the White House, and others, is that they don't understand this. What you and I are discussing right now, they take it for granted. They assume that the dollar is king and always will be king, and how could you possibly question the confidence of the dollar? Well, people are questioning it. Uh, and more will do so in the future, but it is one of these tipping point things where it's not like a long, slow, gradual decline. It can happen very quickly, and that's the point. Don't wait till this happens, because when it happens, it, A, it could happen very quickly, and B, you may find that the things you want to go into are not available at any price. But I'm not going to know what day it is, because it's going to be some unexpected event that maybe none of us see coming. I can just tell you, it, it is coming. So first of all, position yourself now. But if this meltdown comes that I'm describing, and all these other things start crashing 20, 30, 40% or more, gold is likely to be the thing that's going up 200, 300, 400%. I would expect it to get to seven thousand dollars an ounce or more I, again some analysis ten thousand or higher some yeah, even yeah. higher than that that's where i think gold is going to end up okay so now let's i want to show you this this is andy uh, andy shackman who is one of my sponsors he's miles franklin gold which you can use code dai gold if you want to go to miles franklin gold and get some gold but he's talking about Bretton Woods 3. Now, this video is from just a few days ago, before the expiration, supposed expiration of the petrodollar agreement. I think you could argue getting close to, to the end game in terms of this Western system. And I think Zoltan Pozar said it best. And honestly, I truly do. You know, he said we are in Bretton Woods 3. Bretton Woods 1 was when we took over for the pound sterling. Bretton Woods, too, loosely when we became the petrodollar. Now, I'm not saying that this is true, by the way, but there are people out there like John Little uh, from uh, has a substack called Pickaxe. He's done some amazing research on the military industrial complex, but he's claiming that in just a couple of days here on the 9th, that the Saudis have already informed the West that they will no longer honor the 50 year agreement that was signed 50 years ago on the 9th by 
you know, the Saudis and um, uh, what was his name? Can't believe I'm not thinking of it right now. Um, uh, Kissinger. So you know how you feel. I don't know that to be true, but I'll simply tell you this, that, uh, you know, the, the crown, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia recently said China was our most important trading partner this year and for the next 50. Those words might have been chosen more carefully than we can all imagine. But, you know, yeah, these are interesting times we live in, Kai, and I think will only get more interesting. That, by the way, is a Chinese curse. May you live in interesting times. Ooh, Brad Garlinghouse and David Schwartz are ready. For XRP L Apex, there they are. Um, and then here's a uh, little video of people at Apex. Look at that. It's pretty crazy. Up Look, there are also had, more people. I read they had about people. 700 people, which is and about what XRP is Apex uh, entrance. So many people. Um, at least double. I think last year was around 250. I think we're going here at 5700 easily. Um, and the, the hotel is also packed. Everyone from XRP community here, it's great. All right. And then um, let's see. Here's another few pictures from uh, where they are there in Amsterdam. Bunch of <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people. If I can get rid of that, and then here's another one. These are some of the, uh, what do you call those? Little booths. And then, um, let's see what else we got. Okay, before I go into DAIXRP.com, I wanted to show you this. So, remember, Brad Garlinghouse has said two things. One was in this clip right here, where he was saying that the U.S., what did he say exactly? U.S. government's going to go after Tether. In another clip, he said that Tether was going to lose. He said them both multiple times. He said Tether, was, Tether is going to lose market share. And he said that Tether is going to uh, be investigated. Okay? So here, Kraken has been actively reviewing which stablecoins to meet the European standards, potentially leading to dislist delisting of non-compliant stable coins for their EU users. So in DAIXRP.com, I think many of you have seen what I'm going to show you, but many of you haven't. And when you see the picture, it's going to blow your mind. When you see this picture, the first time I saw it, I was like, whoa. It's kind of like one of those aha moments, okay? But the theory here is, what if Bitcoin and Tether were always to be destroyed at some point so that you would run into the arms of what would actually be used. What if? I'm not saying it is. Just saying what if. I'm the digital asset, and that's what I'm going to show you in here. I'm, I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe. Hit the like button. Tell your friends and family that away we go.